Is it possible to reduce the time it takes to master the drums by using the right secret practice techniques? Can you unleash the power of learning science to shortcut all those unsexy years practicing, sounding like crap on stage, feeling the jitters playing with other musicians, and go straight to the being good part? Or is there no forcing it, and the sooner you accept it's going to be a multi-year slog, the better? Well, about a decade ago, I made a bet that you could reduce the time to becoming great on the drums, and I built my whole YouTube channel around it. What if I told you that 80% of what you're practicing right now is a waste of time? And I'm still pretty optimistic about the possibility of accelerating your learning. Well, lately, compared to some of the marketing I see around drum learning, I'm falling more on the conservative side. And recently, this popped up on YouTube. The challenge to perform live in Los Angeles with an internationally renowned rock band. Over the next five days, I will break down drumming. It's Tim Ferriss, a life optimization guy learning to play drums in just one week, with coaching from the great Stuart Copeland, who should come on the podcast. And this wasn't the first time I'd seen this. It's around a decade old. In fact, it was one of the things that inspired this channel. And that's one reason I might be in a decent position to critique the entire premise. Because Tim only had one subject, himself. And he could only run the experiment for one week. I've been running that experiment for the entire past decade, both on myself and my students. And that's caused me to be somewhat more cautious when I consider what's possible. Like, 2024 Nate is way more humble about what's possible and how long it takes. But does that mean there's zero benefit to optimizer bro, well, optimizations when it comes to the drums? Are we all stuck taking the hard way and there are literally no ways to shorten the journey? Well, we'll talk about it. Today on 8020. Can you use 8020 to leapfrog the time it would usually take you to master the drums? Or is that all magical thinking and BS? Stay tuned. Guys, today we're going to make a lot of argumentative arguments in this video, and in case you're tempted to take notes, first of all, game recognize nerd game. But second of all, you do not have to do that because we put everything from this video into a handy outline, which can be yours free when you click the link below the player and tell me where to send it. Just know that, my guy. With that out of the way, let's get into this. Can you really shortcut learning the drums? Let's talk about you for a second. Maybe you got started playing the drums because you saw your heroes playing stadiums, taking solos, driving the band, and it all looks so effortless. You first picked up the sticks because you want to rock or jazz or fusion and smash cut to years in a windowless practice room, toiling away on a practice pad in front of some book called Stick Control. Then years of playing rehearsals and gigs in which sometimes it feels okay and sometimes it doesn't. And maybe it's the drumming and maybe it's not. And you're just not sure how to tune into the right wavelength to just rock. But then you see something like this. Over the next five days, I will break down drumming. I'll find the critical 20% of material that gives me 80% of what I need to reach my goal. I'll put the pieces I've selected in the most effective order and the risk of embarrassing the hell out of myself on stage will keep me motivated. And think, have I been doing it wrong this whole time? If I'd been doing the right stuff, could I have played with Foreigner in one week? Well, not so fast. Or maybe not so fast, we'll see. Throughout Tim's video, he refers to a principle that he claims can save him a ton of time learning the drums. And I should know about that principle because it's the name of my channel. The 80-20 principle, or Pareto principle. Now I realize that none of these elements are part of the critical 20% that I need to learn 80% or more of the song. So if you just find the right things to practice, can you make years worth of progress in just one week while everybody else who keeps practicing the wrong stuff makes zero progress? Hold that in your head because I want to hit you with something else. Let's talk about what the 80-20 principle, the name of my channel, actually means. If we boil it way down, it just means that a small number of inputs controls a large number of outputs. In Pareto's pea plants, for example, Pareto is Vilfredo Pareto, an Italian not gonna look this up. And he had pea plants, and he made a counterintuitive discovery. If I remember right, more than 80% of the peas came from just 20% of the plants. And I know where you're going. If that's true, maybe 80% of my gains on drums come from only 20% of the things I'm working on. Okay, but why do we care? 70 from 10%, 30 from 50%, like who literally cares? What does this have to do with anything? Here's why Pareto's finding was novel and counterintuitive. And warning, it's about to get nerdy, but stick with me and I'll bring it in for a landing. But here's why the 80-20 principle isn't just, so what, man, that changes nothing. In nature, a lot of things are, well, average, like height. 
There's an average height, and most people are close to the average. And the farther you get from the average height, the fewer people there are. That's what statisticians call normal distribution, or the bell curve for my nerds. The bell shape is because the average is at the center and most people are close to it. Anyway, you might assume pea plants are the same. You might assume the average is, I don't know, 100 pea pods per year and most of the plants in Pareto's field produced around 100 and fewer produced 200 or 50 and still fewer produced zero. Have I lost you? Stay with me. Here are some drums. Let's watch Justin Tyson while we talk about what it takes to get good like Justin Tyson. You might assume there's kind of an average utility to all the things you might practice. Stick control, coordination, rudiments, beats, etc. And most exercises or things you could work on are about as effective as that average, and very few things are extremely effective and just as few have zero effect at all. And here's why this whole thing is important. If that's true of drum learning, then most people would take around the average time to get good at drums, and there wouldn't be that many ways to speed it up by very much. But here's why Pareto turned that on its head, and why, if that's true, it means a few things you could practice could get you to the finish line way faster. Pareto's famous pea plants didn't cluster toward the average at all. Most pea plants produce next to nothing but a small number produced almost all of the peas in the field. So if you were assuming a pea plant is a pea plant, you were dead wrong. They had a different distribution. And it's named after Pareto, the Pareto distribution, also sometimes called the power law. You can see the shape in this graph. For most inputs, there's hardly any result. Then at the tail end, it hockey sticks, and almost all of the results are from just those few inputs. Drums again, drums. Ah, the soothing sound of drums. Here's why this whole pea plants thing is so important to you, dear viewer. If Pareto's principles were true of drums, that would mean most exercises and approaches do next to nothing for you, but a small amount do almost everything. Here's Tim explaining its application to learning that foreigner song. Now I realize that none of these elements are part of the critical 20% that I need to learn 80% or more of the song. There are three grooves that make up the song hot-blooded, the verse, the chorus, and the pre-chorus. That is my 20%, and that's what I'm going to focus on to get me prepared for game day and the big show. He feels he's found the critical 20% by cutting out the reading and fills, and focusing only on the crucial grooves. Imagine if that were true across all of drumming. A few things produced all the results, and they were far from the average things. If that were true, imagine the outrageous marketing claims I could make. Make six years of progress in just three months. Secrets, drum book publishers don't want you to know. This guy is going to spend decades in the practice room, but this girl knows the secrets to accelerated success, and she's gonna become a pro drummer in just one month. It would be like a master key to unlock drumming in a fraction of the time. And to be fair, I think this was basically true for Tim in this video, and I'll explain why later. But for you, dear viewer, is that really true? Or is it kind of bullshit? Search your intuition a little. Does that really feel like the way we learn the drums? No, right? Practically every great musician put in decades of consistent daily practice. Even the prodigiously talented ones, Tony Williams, Vinny, all the greats practiced for decades. Look up interviews with any of them. And in your own practice, do you feel this effect firsthand? Do you feel like you're playing paradiddles one day and your progress is meh, then you switch to Rat at McHugh's the next day and suddenly your growth just hockey sticks? No, right? So what's going on there? How can it be true of pea pods, but apparently not for drums? Why did it apparently work for Tim in the video, but not for us in our day to day? Don't worry, we'll explain. To understand why we can't just Pareto our way to being world-class drummers in a few months, I wanna talk about something called the efficient frontier. Trust me, I'll segue to how this is relevant on drums. Drums again. This is Mike Mitchell, one of the most pyrotechnic drummers in the world. Mike is so good, he's close to something called the efficient frontier, which, I'll paraphrase from Wikipedia, is a solution to a problem that's so good that no other solutions exist that work better without any additional downside. For my super nerds, it's kind of like a Nash equilibrium in game theory, only for investment. In its original meaning, and now we're going to use it for drums. <laughs> drums. Drums. But you can think of the efficient frontier as the most optimal training regime. Let's use sports as an easy illustration. If a sport is not close to the efficient frontier, that means somebody could start getting way better results just by trying one different thing. Like Dick Fosbury did in high jumping, in a famous example Tim Ferriss describes in his first book. Everybody else was running up to the bar and trying to jump over frontwards. Fosbury decided to try flopping over the bar from side on, and could immediately high jump way higher than the competition. High jumping was not close to the efficient frontier. Now it's closer. It's unlikely we'll have another Fosbury anytime soon. More likely, future progress will be made incrementally by finding marginal improvements, which is still powerful in the aggregate. More on which later. Drums again.
So why do I bring this up? Because in disciplines that are far away from the efficient frontier, it's pretty easy for somebody to come up with a slightly different approach and just start crushing everybody. For example, the first time somebody realized they could hold the drumstick in a fulcrum and control the bounce to get multiple strokes without forcing everyone. Or they could group the drums together to allow multiple parts to happen at the same time. These produced huge jumps in people's ability. The difference between a generation after trap kits were common and a generation before was probably huge. And imagine being one of the first drummers to realize humans were capable of using the trap kit to play intricate, seemingly independent things. People who made those discoveries could truly claim to be using the 20% of Pareto's 80-20. Most things people were doing at the time had close to no utility for mastering this brand new trap kit quickly, while the stuff these guys were doing had almost all of it. But, and I'm sure you know where I'm going, is that still true? I'd argue not as much. Over the years, most of those early big step gains have made their way into the way everybody teaches and practices, which means there are fewer opportunities for somebody to come along who changes one big thing and suddenly starts getting 5x results compared to everybody else. To put it another way, it's harder to 80-20 drums in 2024 because it's already been 80-20. God help us, do we need a footnote here? For the real math nerds who are gonna say 80-20 is fractal, that there's an 80-20 to the 80-20? Like markets, Perry Marshall pointed out in his book, wait for it, 80-20 sales and marketing, that 80% of your sales come from 20% of your customers, and that 80% of the sales in that 20% come from 20% of that 20%, and it's at least somewhat recursive. Now, I'm not a statistician or an economist, and my math people in my comments can check me, but I think I can explain why, God help me, drums have an efficient frontier to their 80-20. We will get back to drum stuff soon, I promise. In fact, let's put a timer on the screen counting down when we'll get out of this nerd stuff. Anyway, I think this has to do with the range available within the inputs. Like, within an economy, there's a big range between the lowest earners and the highest ones. So you can keep going up the ladder. 80-20 of the 20% highest earners. 20% of those. 20% of those. And you have to go a lot of orders of magnitude before you exhaust all those 80-20s. Whereas musical practice has a more limited range. The best 1% of practice techniques might be 10 times better than the worst 1%, but they're not a million times better. I suspect that's because money is an abstract that isn't really bound by physics or biology, whereas sports or the drums are. Definitely the nerdiest thing I've ever covered on this channel. Back to drums. <laughs> So we can't 80-20 drums anymore because it's already been 80-20. Does that mean there are no shortcuts left at all anywhere? Should I just shut down the 80-20 drummer? And by extension, drum lessons everywhere. Because if there's no such thing as a better way to learn the drums, then why pay a teacher for anything? Just as we asked before, does that pass the sniff test? If you're learning to improvise on the toms, are we really saying there's zero difference between actually working out a specific exercise for improvising on the toms, as my student Jack is doing here, and just playing mindless double strokes on the practice pad? Wrong, right? I'm willing to bet that you can feel intuitively that practicing certain things is better than others. And I think we could feel that Tim Ferriss is correct here when he identifies that some things are going to be higher utility for learning a song on the drums in just one week than others. In fact, I'm willing to bet a bunch of drummers smiled watching Tim learn for the first time some pearls of wisdom we've been repeating to our students for years. There are three grooves that make up the song Hot-Blooded. The verse, the chorus, and the pre-chorus. That is my 20%. And that's what I'm going to focus on to get me prepared for game day and the big show. But that's part of the point. Tim was learning them for the first time. Let's explain what I mean and why I think it means we shouldn't be so quick to throw out the marginal improvements baby with the radical improvements bathwater. I mentioned at the top of the video that I've been doing experiments like these for years. Giving myself a challenge and a compressed amount of time. Like, here I am learning one of Periphery's hardest conceptual songs, as distinct from their songs that require athletic double bass or extremely fast tempos, in just a few weeks. And the things Tim talks about in his video still apply even when I, a drummer with a decade of experience playing, teaching, and gigging, use them on a song that's a lot more complex than Hot-Blooded by Foreigner, which is no offense to either the band or that song, both of which are great. It's skipping over the easy stuff and using most of the time getting reps on the most difficult things in the song. By definition, the things that are going to require the most time. And here's where we arrive at the principle that's a limiting factor for 80-20 on drums. The reason drum learning techniques aren't turtles all the way down and you can keep going 80-20 of the 80-20 like money earners. It's reps, muscle memory, and long-term memory. In fact, here's Periphery's Matt Halpern explaining how he learns this song. I'm listening when I'm driving my, in my car. Uh, funny enough, Dracul Grass was like my, my timer song for my ice baths for a while. <laughs> when I was learning it. Honestly, like I, would, I would put that song on because I, then I didn't have to look at the timer and I knew it was around 10, 11 minutes, which is what, I, what my goal was for being in the ice bath. So I would just 
do other things and I had a lot of time to do that to really internalize it. I firmly believe until some new study comes out that proves me wrong, reps are kind of like the speed of light for learning, which is to say a hard speed limit to how quickly we can absorb things. You're never going to learn something faster than the person who puts in the most reps of the most relevant skills with the most concentration and the best other factors like sleep and health to help them. And that's true even of Tim. In this clip, you can tell he's doing a ton of reps, even staying up late into the night to get those reps. Psychologists can correct me in the comments, but if I understand Dan Coyle's book, The Talent Code, I believe what's going on is something called myelination, a process where when we form new pathways in our brain, they're kind of fragile. And then through more reps, they actually kind of get insulated and reinforced until signals can flow along them more efficiently. And you can probably feel that anecdotally too. When you first start learning a new skill, it takes all your conscious concentration to get it right. Gradually over time and many repetitions, it starts to become second nature. And you can do it without thinking. Here's Stuart explaining roughly the same thing. Right now, you're doing it, but you're... Tense. Yeah, and that's just because your, your brain is telling and controlling consciously every action. And what you're gonna do by just playing is to get outside of your body. And the thing that finally breaks that speed limit might be some neural link matrix thing where our brain gets simulated reps so we no longer have to do reps in the real world. I know kung fu. But until then, we're stuck with reps in the physical world. Besides, Tim wasn't talking about plugging his brain into a supercomputer. He was talking about analog, unsexy drum practice in the real world. And here's why this is ultimately a hopeful video. Remember how I said you're never gonna beat the person who puts in the highest number, the most concentrated reps with the fewest distractions and the best other factors like sleep and general health to help them? Well, it turns out a lot of improvements are hiding in those qualifiers, like most relevant skill. Here's how I think 80-20 works in the real world. In the real world, I think there's at least a minor difference amongst the things you could choose to work on. Just for instance, if you want to get better at fills around the drums, you could practice an exercise that's directly relevant to that, like this one, or you could just practice single strokes. But that's the crux. String together enough of those minor wins over time, and over the long haul, you can start to change your trajectory away from the average. Let's look at some real world 80-20. Let's say you need 20 hours to master any discrete skill, which is something like what my friend Nathan is saying here. If you would shed a pattern for four hours a day, for like six days a week, for like a month, it's there for the rest of your life. It let's say your goal is to learn to play drums on a difficult song in as short a time possible. Let's say there's a range of things you could work on, from simple paradiddles, to trying to play along with the song, to just listening to the song. Let's say drummer A is non-80-20. He's going to keep practicing his stick control, then hit some stuff out of Gary Chafee, then give the song a run-through at the end of the session. Let's say drummer B is trying to practice 80-20. His first task is to figure out what are the most relevant things to get reps on. If I spend 10 hours on something, what's going to give me the best return when it comes to learning this song? Let's say we fast forward another week and we compare the performances. Drummer A will have a greater general familiarity with the song than he used to. He'll probably get from one end to the other, but he'll have to fake a lot of parts. In that same amount of time, Drummer B has spent nearly 20 hours repping the highest leverage kernels of the song, then four hours going through the song as a whole and plugging any holes. Then he still had four hours to backburner the song and just hit it at the end of the day while it wormed its way into his long-term memory. Or the ice bath, like Matt here. So that's example one of how, even if the most efficient things you could practice are only 20% more efficient than the least efficient, instead of orders of magnitude, over time, the slow 80-20 still works. But I can hear you say, what about Tim? Tim still learned hot-blooded in a week. Here's the last exception to slow 80-20 in my opinion. When you start at the very beginning of the learning curve. Tim had never touched the sticks before, and the range of things he could have worked on was huge from reading to paradiddles to, well, what he ended up actually doing. And when you're a complete beginner, 20 hours of reps on something relevant is probably gonna make a three to four X difference. But for those of us who already played a few years and eliminated the low hanging fruit, it's a lot harder. So our 80, 20 and accelerated learning bullshit, I'm going to go with partially. I believe I've demonstrated how you can change your trajectory over the course of years by stringing together a lot of little advantages. But we're talking about five years instead of 10, not three months instead of 10 years. Anyway. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have a comment, please leave it below. And just a reminder, if you want the complete show notes for this, which we've organized for you meticulously, just click the link below the player and tell us where to send it. Dudes, it's been real. Always enjoy these. See you again real soon in another Lesson of the Week.